Okay, in this section I'm going to talk about the diesel thermodynamic cycle. So I'm going to talk about the operation of the diesel cycle in relation to an internal combustion engine, um, all the processes that um, uh, make up that cycle, and I'm just going to present to you the thermal efficiency. I'm not going to derive it for you. Um, the full derivation is in your notes, so please, please refer back to those. Okay, so as with the Otto cycle, I've got a um, sort of starting off with this blank um, PV plot, pressure volume plot, and we're starting at um, state zero in the bottom left hand corner with the piston at top dead center and obviously low pressure. So, as with the Otto cycle, the first stroke is um, induction, so the piston moves down the inlet valve is open and fresh air flows into the cylinder. And this process is considered to be isobaric. You see it's a horizontal line on this, um, this plot. Okay. Until the um, piston gets to bottom dead center at maximum volume at state one. So then in the next stroke, the inlet valve closes. The piston is forced up as the crank rotates. And as the, the piston moves up, it compresses the air inside the cylinder, so both the volume and pressure um, and temperature increase till we get to state two. And as with the auto cycle, obviously we're putting work in uh, to make this happen. <clears throat> so as you can see, this has been the same as the auto cycle up to now. We've inducted the air and we've um, compressed the air. However, what really differs between the auto cycle and the diesel cycle is the combustion. So if you remember for the auto cycle, go back and watch that video if you haven't done so already. Um, we had a spark plug that ignites the fuel. And that we said that um, the gasoline is a fast burning fuel and we can treat that combustion as happening instantaneously. So we had an isochoric. Um, pressure and temperature rise inside the cylinder which happened instantaneously so there's no change in volume. However the combustion in the diesel cycle is slightly different so it doesn't use the spark plug um, to ignite the fuel. What it uses is it uses the, um, the temperature and pressure in the cylinder. The fuel is injected into the cylinder at this point and because it's sufficiently hot in the cylinder as the fuel is injected it starts to combust because um, the fuel is now in a, in an environment um, where the temperature and pressure is above its auto ignition point. Okay, so the fuel spontaneously combusts. It doesn't need a spark to combust because the conditions in the cylinder are such. And what happens is as the fuel sort of sprayed into the cylinder, the the fuel starts to burn, and more of it's injected, and more of it burns. And so this um, process can be thought of as um, much slower burning. Um, compared to the instantaneous burning of the fuel, the gasoline in the auto cycle. Okay, so you can think of the diesel burning slower because of the way it's um, injected. And so what that means is we end up effectively with um, what we say is an isobaric process. So the fuel is being injected, um, it's burning, which is um, obviously releasing heat and causing the um, temperature of the gases to increase. But because the piston is, at, so, so sorry, the, um, the temperature increases, so therefore the pressure increases, but because um, as the pressure is increasing, it's pushing on the, the, um, the piston and forcing it down. So the volume's increasing. So that sort of change in pressure that's increasing as a result of the combustion is being offset by the decrease in pressure as the volume is increasing due to the piston going down. So just take a moment to think about that. So what you end up is with those two sort of balancing and ending up with an isobaric process. So it's nice, we're obviously putting heat in here, so it's an isobaric heat addition. And this is all because we're assuming that this diesel is slow burning. Now, eventually you reach a point where all the fuel is being combusted. So you can't keep adding fuel because there's only a finite 
amount of oxygen in the cylinder. So once you've um, spent all that oxygen, you're not going to burn. It's not going to burn anymore. So there's no point injecting any fuel anymore. So you reach a point where, which is shown as state three on this plot, where um, the fuel stops injecting. And this is called the, the cutoff ratio. So the, the ratio um, between state three and state two in terms of volume, it's called the cutoff ratio, okay? Um, where the fuel stopped injecting. However, we still got hot gases here and sufficient pressure. So the piston continues to um, be pushed down and the volume increase continues to expand. And obviously we're extracting work um, during this process. Okay, so um, we get work out and then eventually the, the piston gets to the, um, uh, the bottom, bottom dead center. And then similar, in a similar manner to the auto cycle, we assume that um, the exhaust so the exhaust gas opens, all the exhaust, exhaust gas is um, escaped from the cylinder. We assume this happens instantaneously. And so what that equates to is an isochoric heat rejection of heat out of the system. Okay, so you can see there's some similarity and some differences between the diesel and auto cycle. And it's important to understand that. And basically the main diff, the obviously is, the main difference is because an auto cycle is a spark ignition engine, an SI engine, and a diesel engine is a compression ignition engine, C or CI for short. And so what that looks like on a TS plot is um, actually fairly similar to the um, how it looks for an auto cycle. So both the um, com compression and expansion strokes seem to be isentropic. Um, so straight lines on this TS plot, and we, but the main difference is so we've got isobaric heat addition and isochoric heat rejection. Okay, so as I said, you'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to um, derive this for you, um, but I did it in exactly the same way um, as I did it for the auto, um, derived the thermal efficiency for the auto cycle, and that I wrote all the processes um, in terms of temperature ratio. I express the thermal efficiency in terms of temperature ratio and I substituted one into the other and cancelled down. So what you can see is that the thermal efficiency for a diesel engine, like the auto engine, is a function of the compression ratio, okay, but and, and the um, the ratio of specific heats gamma. But you can see there's a new term in here which is um, RC and that's that cutoff ratio that I was talking about. So um, it's related to how much fuel is, is added into the engine, or should I say when this isobaric um, heat addition stops.